One of the most frustrating things that our brains do is the tendency that they have to ruminate. Rumination is when we have one certain thought or idea or memory in some cases that kind of gets stuck in our brain. The same way a really catchy song might sometimes get stuck in your brain and it just seems to recycle or repeat itself over and over and over again. And often when you're ruminating, whether it's a stressor in your future that may come to pass or something from your past that you regret, or feel shame about or wish had gone differently, often the harder you try to not focus on it or the harder you try to relax and rest and unwind, the more your brain actually holds on to this pattern of rumination. It's very similar to when you try to make yourself fall asleep. And the harder you try, the more effort you exert into trying to sleep, the more alert and awake you become, and the harder it actually is to fall asleep. Don't you just love brains? I mean, like at the end of the day, I guess I am glad that we have them, but my goodness, are they frustrating sometimes. And they just have so many seemingly backwards kind of paradoxical type things that they do. The reason that rumination is often worsened or triggered by rest and relaxation is because there is a relatively consistent finite amount of energy or activity happening in your brain at any given time. It's measured in terms of electrical impulses between neurons. And when you're awake and alert and active, there is some variation, but there's a pretty stable level of mental activity happening. And so you can't really, other than like doing really intense relaxation activities that produce alpha waves, which are sort of a precursor to sleep or deep states of rest, you can't really make your brain calm down. There's not, there's not a direct mechanism that we have to decrease the amount of mental activity that is occurring at any given time inside of our minds. We do somewhat have the ability, not perfectly, but to some degree, we can influence the content of the mental activity, meaning we can choose to focus on certain things, but you can't, there's no way to do it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You can't just make your brain chill out and like reduce activity. It, it's not, there's no direct mechanism by which a human being can do that. So that's why it's, that's one of the reasons, there's many reasons, why it's so frustrating when someone tells you like, just calm down or just relax, because that's, that's not an actionable command. It's not actually a thing that you have a physical way of doing. When we're really stuck in ruminative patterns, that rumination tends to take up a large proportion of your mental energy. So if you thought, I, I know I've made this metaphor before, but it's been a long time ago, so it probably feels fresh. If you thought of everything that's happening inside of your mind, at any given time as being represented by a pie chart because there often are right two or three different things on our mind um we can sometimes be a hundred percent just laser focused on one thing uh, but i think for most busy adults that's probably a relatively rare experience and we're often kind of fluctuating between a few different ideas or thoughts or concerns when you have a ruminative process happening in your mind when your brain gets really stuck on something and it's usually something unpleasant your brain will basically fill any unused space in that pie chart with the rumination right so let's say let's say i've recently interviewed for a job and i am waiting on getting a call back from them hopefully i, I don't know if they liked me or not and so i'm just sitting around waiting hoping they'll call me and offer me the job, but afraid that they won't. Because that's a pretty big deal, and because it's something that could significantly impact the course of my life, I'm probably not going to be able to just not think about it, right? Like, I'm not just going to stop caring about hearing back from this potential employer. And so because this is a big deal to me, because I really want this job, and I'm going to be really devastated, I'm going to be really hurt if they don't offer me the position. It's going to cause me a lot of stress and it's going to cause me a lot of anxiety as I worry about potentially not being offered the position. Because I feel a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, my natural impulse, what I think I'm, quote, supposed to do to cope with that is to relax. And so I'm going to probably engage in a lot of low stimulation, kind of underwhelming 
calm, quiet, slow paced type activities. Maybe I'm like, okay, I'm just going to like sit on the couch in a quiet room and just watch some light, easy television because that's a relaxing activity and that's going to calm this stress and this chaos in my mind. Seems like it makes sense on the surface, right? It's going to typically backfire because what's happening is there's not a lot of stimulation happening in your environment during that time. And so going back to your pie chart, the percentage of this pie chart taken up by what you're actually doing in that moment, sitting on the couch, watching a kind of slow paced show on television is small. It's not very demanding, right? It doesn't require much of you. Your brain does not have to work very hard to do that. So a fairly small proportion of your attention is consumed by this activity. And the remainder, the entire rest of this pie chart is, I'm freaking out about the job. I'm freaking out about the job. I'm freaking out about the job. Did they hate me? Am I going to get it? You know, over, you know how it goes, right? Over and over and over again. Because when we are ruminating, when there's something big on our minds that we can't get rid of, we can't just stop thinking about it, any unused portion of your mental energy, any you know blank space so-called on this pie chart will get filled in with the ruminative thought. It's kind of like that spray foam stuff that you put in cracks in your house. Obviously, I'm a very handy person and know the name of this thing, um, but you know what I'm talking about. The bigger the gap, the more foam is going to go in there, right? Well, the foam is your rumination. It takes up all the empty space. And so doing nothing or doing very little is actually the worst possible choice you can make when you're ruminating because you're leaving your mind almost completely understimulated and unoccupied to just keep replaying this stressor over and over and over again. So that's why your best move when you're stuck in a ruminative thought pattern is actually to do high stimulation engaging activities because those are gonna take up a much larger percentage of your mental activity. They're gonna take up more space in that pie chart. And because they take up more space in that pie chart, the amount of space left over that the ruminative thought can exist in shrinks dramatically because we can't eject that thought from our mind. We can't stop caring about the job or the test results or waiting on that text back from our partner, whatever. You're not just going to forget about it. It's There's no way. Our brains don't work that way. But if you minimize the amount of space in which it is allowed to exist within your mind, you will correspondingly minimize the amount of emotional distress that comes from that ruminative thought. Now, we only want to do this with an actual ruminative thought with no action steps. Like if you're stressed about something and there's and you can do something about that, you can go take action to potentially resolve that issue, then that's what you want to do. But sometimes it's not an option. Sometimes we're just waiting on things or people or situations. And if you're just sitting around waiting, or like I said, maybe it's something from your past, there is no action step. There's nothing you can do. It's over. And so you're basically just torturing yourself when you ruminate on these things over and over and over again. The most healthy and helpful thing for you to do for your own mental health is keep your brain busy so that your mind gets off of the stressor or off of the shame or off of the guilt. So we don't necessarily want to be just sitting on the couch watching mindless TV or doom scrolling or whatever, because these things require so little of us. They, they take up so little space in our brains. When you're stuck in rumination, that's a great time to listen to a really engaging podcast, read a book that really grabs you, whether that's because it's like a nonfiction book that has a lot of personal application to your life or a fiction book with an incredibly gripping, like thrilling storyline. It's a great time to work on home improvement projects or do something creative, write, draw, paint. We want to do things that really do require a lot of us because we want to get our minds off of the rumination. And that's why ultimately, if you're a person living with a chronic mental health condition, doing nothing is often one of the worst things that you can do because it leaves so much unfilled space in your brain. 
to use another metaphor, it's a little bit like taking care of a small child. Like, let's say you have a three-year-old, okay? Three-year-olds have a lot of energy, and they're going to find ways to use that energy. You cannot really change the amount of energy that a three-year-old has. It's a pretty consistent, pretty finite amount, much like your own mind. What you can do is you can direct the energy of the three-year-old onto things that you find acceptable, right? So if you give that three-year-old kid like an easel, for example, and some paint and say, hey, have fun, do some drawing, they will probably, hopefully, sometimes <laughs> do that drawing. If you don't direct the energy of the three-year-old, they may do that drawing on your wall or on your bathroom mirror instead because they still had the same amount of energy and they had to find a way to express that energy, but they were not directed in terms of how to express that energy. So they made their own choices about that and they may have been choices you did not like or approve of. This is how your brain works. The part, These parts of your brain aren't necessarily a lot different than that of a three-year-old. They're more primitive, simpler parts of your brain. And so you cannot stop that energy from existing. You cannot stop that thought from being in your brain. But you can direct your mental energy towards things that you want your day to be focused on. And then your day will be focused on those things. If you do not direct your energy to those things, it will find its way back to the stressor to the guilt, to the shame, to the regret, to the fear, to the trauma even sometimes, over and over and over again. Now, I'm not saying become a workaholic. I'm not saying you have to like be go, go, go type A all the time. That's not for everybody. High stimulation activities don't have to be high physical energy activities. It's mental stimulation that we're looking for. So I'm not saying you have to just constantly be in a state of motion. But really, you don't want to spend a lot of time mentally understimulated because I pretty much guarantee if you look back at your own life and your own experiences with emotional distress, you will find that there is a very clear relationship between periods of boredom and understimulation and mental inactivity and doing nothing and heightened emotional distress about things that you cannot control, either because they've already happened or they haven't happened yet and might never happen. This is your brain's default mode. We are survival-oriented mammals. And for most of human history, life has been very dangerous. So we are all evolved from a line of pessimistic, anxious, fearful, worst-case scenario thinkers because those wants were adaptive survival responses. I know I've said all that before, but it's important and worth hearing again. So if you just... Leave your brain to its own devices and say, brain, you just go wherever you want. I'm not going to direct you. I'm just going to chill here. It's not going to go to good stuff very often. It's not built to do that. And that is why doing nothing is dangerous.